So remaking um, Core Seaside was uh, a bit of a uh, it was it was a ton of fun. I really really enjoyed uh, making it, and I learned a lot about um, just the way that the tiniest little difference between um, a, a character or a, a particular mechanic can just change so much about um, the way the level is designed, the way things are timed, the way I mean, there's just so many things that come from the implications. Um, of just changing is something as simple as like a dash. Um, that was the biggest challenge to this. It was, it was tremendously fun to do. Um, but I will say that the big challenge was that Madeline does not move the same way uh, Mario and his friends do. So and what I mean by that is um, there's a couple things. Number one, of course, and I'll put it on screen, but Madeline has a lot more movement uh, whenever she is coming down from a jump. She is just much more mobile in the air, whereas Mario uh, does not really have that level of movement. Uh, he has a much stronger jump, obviously much higher, and uh, things are a little bit different in that regard. But there's not nearly as much movement, and more importantly, uh, especially to when it comes to making this level, is that he doesn't have the dash, and without the dash, there's no way to sort of move mid-air. There's no interaction with dream blocks, which you can see right here. This is where the dream blocks would have been um, in this little section here, and what I had to do for a lot of this level was I had to figure out... Because Mario can't do a, a dash and you can't have access to dream blocks, and you also can't um, grab onto walls and climb them, you have to completely change sort of what what the character what you what you make the player do. Um, but at the same time, I think the real challenge is just sort of trying to make it so that the the difficulty or the feel the feel the difficulty and the challenge stays all the same, right? So, for example, this um, like there was no way to to grab onto the side of this um, big thwomp, right? But there is, what are they called? I think they're like the angry, something about the angry. I have like a list of all the different mechanics because I know I know what I call them. In my, yeah, the angry platforms. Um, I have like a list of what I call all the different um, Celeste things in my mind, um, but it's, it's not the same as obviously what, you know, the wiki calls it. But so that for this part, if I can do it correctly, um, for this part, obviously you cannot grab onto the side of this thwomp, but to sort of maintain the difficulty and the, you know, the quote unquote spirit of what that part was about holding on and like jumping off at the right moment. I had this part where you have to bail last second. It's kind of a tight squeeze. You come out the other side. Right. And so it was kind of doing things like that. Um, and, uh, and, and this of course is the section with the, and I'm not, it's, I'm really bad at this part actually. Um, but this is the section with the, uh, just the high columns of spikes and you have to do all the dashes through it because you don't have access to the dash. Of course, I thought, well, how am I going to sort of make this really tight and try to get all the way through it? Um, and you just have these guys and you have to time, um, your jumps just right so that you don't jump too high. It's like a low jump, low jump, and then a high jump, but I can't obviously have talent in the moment as I talk. Um, but <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, and I kind of regret putting it towards the end of the level, but I'm again, I'm trying to recreate Seaside, and uh, that's sort of the, the hand that we're dealt. But you get the idea. You go boom, 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 and, and go over, and I should have shown it a minute ago. Um, but ultimately, that was the biggest challenge of this, was trying to figure out how do I make this... How do I strike a balance between making this aesthetically correct and making this... Um, challenging in the same way that core seaside is because it's such an iconic level to me when I think about crazy levels in Celeste that's where my mind goes um, mainly because it just sort of recaps all the different mechanics of the game now if you're a person that's never played Celeste and you're picking up Mario Maker and you're thinking well this looks like a fun stage um, it's gonna be tough for you and the reason for that is because it's like all um, like most of the more difficult stages in Celeste it's very uh, it's very long and what it does is it sort of almost is like a song you you have to sort of learn the first part first and i'm not a musician i assume this is how songs are done but you you have to learn the first part first and what makes the level so difficult is that when you get towards the end your repetitions for this first part are going to be huge because you're going to be trying again and trying again and you're going to start getting the hang of these first parts but the parts towards the end of the level you're going to have a whole lot less repetition and so it's going to create those intense moments of like holy crap, I'm finally here, I, you know, this is my chance, it's going to be a while till I get here again, and so you try to make it count, um, and that's what I think is great about Celeste, and what I, I think is cool about this level too, because it just goes so long, 
Um, but again, that is, you know, that's, that's not something that you're just, this is not a level and Celeste is also not a game where you're just going to pick up and sort of beat. Um, and you can see here actually something kind of cool because I don't have the, um, these, these on off switches are sort of the little, what are they called? They're just the switches in the course, in the course C side, the little red and blue hearts that you switch. Um, it just makes the ceiling sort of come down or it makes the lava rise and it just alternates it. Um, obviously we don't have that here. Um, I was very excited and the reason I got the idea to do this is because there is the lava that we have access to in Mario Maker 2. And I, I never played one, to be honest with you. This is actually my first stage I've ever, I've ever made. Um, but I thought it would be a good stage to start with because it just had so many different mechanics with, and I thought it'd be a good challenge too. We don't have access to any way to make the switch stop the lava and go back down at the timing of it. So what I had to do, and, and the same thing goes for the, 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 I had a little more control of the, of the top layer. Now, obviously we don't have icy lava coming down, but we have these thwomps. And so what it is, is you have to make sure you hit the right switch at all times um, so that the swamp, so, so that the thwomps don't get you. So if I, um, let me just restart here. If I don't hit this first switch and I decide to go, the thwomps are going to get me. Now I had damage boosting there, but they're going to get me if I try to go again. Hang on. So if I don't, I might, I might escape them here because I'm fast enough, but they're going to catch up eventually because they're all strung across the top here. Um, you have to hit the switch to continue, just like in core C side, you have to hit the switch in order to get to the next part without getting, you know, frozen or roasted alive. And, uh, and, and that was sort of the, what I wanted to keep. Now, obviously this is where the lava stops. It's not going to go any higher than this, but what it's going to do, the timing of it, um, is that it's going to create these close calls where you get up here and it's like, whoo, I just, I just made it, you know? Um, and that's kind of what I was hoping for. And one of the most interesting parts of this was figuring out the timing, like where's the lava going to be when I'm here, you know, where's the lava going to be so that I can make it a close call and still have a coherent level. So this, it took actually a lot of, a lot of repetition to make this. Um, and I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I, I know, I don't know how many YouTubers go into detail about their Mario maker levels, um, but I was pretty proud of this just because, not because it's a great level. Um, obviously, I just copied a level, if we're being honest, but I just learned a lot uh, about the tiniest little thing. Like not having access to a midair dash suddenly means you have to change everything about it. You know, not having access to a side trampoline. This part right here, um, whenever I came up and I hit this note, most people, I won't say most people, but one of your options as a player is you can, uh, the notes have sort of a, a, a sliding scale. I'm pretty sure it's just two big functions. It's either like a tiny jump or a big jump. Um, a lot of people I would, I would figure uh, hit these and they think I'm gonna go really fast and far and then they always hit A on it. And if you do that here, you're either going to hit the spike or you're gonna hit the on switch and at such a speed that you're just gonna go flying into the lava after you bounce off of it. Um, and actually what you have to do is you have to be very gentle and sort of just land on it. And the reason this even got here in the first place was because, because I don't have access to a climbing mechanic. I was trying to recreate this part and I'll put, put it up on screen. I was trying to recreate this part where you have to climb up onto the block after coming along the platforms. And I thought, well, that would be a cool way to just sort of quote unquote climb up because you can't really reach from here to here, um, doing a safe jump with all this junk. And so that was my thought, but it actually serves as a nice little tutorial for the fact that you should not be hitting these as hard as you can when you get to this part, because at this part, um, and this sort of replicate replicates the, um, the little pink clouds that they bring in. What are those called? I'm looking it up. I have like the Celeste wiki. I want to make sure I get all my terms right. So I sound, um, very educated, which I'm not, I'm just passionate, which is, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't know what they're called, but they're just the little clouds, the little pink clouds. And they, they, and the pink clouds in Celeste function the same way as the notes here, the, the note blocks here do, and that they have a tiny jump where you just don't press anything and you bounce off them subject to the speed at which you come at them. Or you can hit, you know, you can hit A during a certain um, series of frames and take a huge leap. And in Celeste, you know, it really plays with you during this part because the ceiling is lowering and I couldn't obviously you know, get an ice ceiling, but I had the spikes, but the ceiling 
something is lowering and you cannot take these big, huge leaps. You have to sort of let it trickle you down. And funny enough, I was so, that's my least favorite part of, sea, of core seaside is those clouds because I can never quite figure out the timing. I always feel like I slip off. I can't like fully jump. And this, <laughs> this plays the exact same way. I kept, I, I was so frustrated uh, making this level because I just kept falling off these and I just, and I've got it down now. I mean, I have it down to the T now because I've done it hundreds of times. Um, but that is a part that I think is going to be really frustrating about this level. But what's cool about it is, again, it, it just it, it sort of subverts your expectations that you're not trying to take the biggest jump. You're trying to carefully jump a little bit, uh, a little bit more subtly. And you'll notice um, these two, again, we don't have a dream block because there is no way to dash. Um, so that's one thing that uh, is good to know. Uh, you have to find some way if you're going to remake a level from Celeste or whatever to adapt some of those moments. Um, I did see a thing I will say was very cool about this. Dan Salvato, the guy that made Doki Doki Literature Club, he made a Mario Maker level. Uh, I'm going to put it up. I don't remember the, the name of it, but it was very cool. It had a, it had like a red switch. It had the on off switch and then it had a, um, a brick that was undone on top of it. And there's some sort of, or maybe it was the other way around. I think it was the other way around. Um, but somehow he had them stacked and if you hit one block the other one will spawn where you're at and it like shoots you upward and so it basically became you jump into it it shoots you upward which is probably the closest you're going to get to the dream block I thought about maybe doing that but I, I just because of the weird timing of this level I thought I would just leave it but that's a really excellent way really more innovative way than I've got uh, to make that part um, so that's very very cool props to him he's a he's a, a genius when it comes to making games obviously uh and i've also heard he's very cool so that's that's very nice um so you go here you do your little you do dream block um wall bounces this part i'm not a fan of but it's one of the it's one of the, the things you have to deal with because of mario maker um you have to sort of just stand there and wait um while the lava goes down and then you can come over here and make your jump and it's really close if you don't if you're not fast enough um, you run into the issue, but um, this part right here, I just I'm not a, a huge fan of. One thing that's nice about it is that because you have these donuts here, my idea was it, it sort of just drives home the point that hey, these things are blocking the way. But you also have to keep it red instead of swapping it to blue. You have to keep it red, so it just sort of keeps you on your toes. Um, there, I made it really easy to make sure that you hit the switch. Um, you have to drop into the arrow, so it's a close call. Um, one thing I wanted to note. And I don't think I've got to the end. I think this is, this might actually be a lot longer than I imagined it being, um, just because I have a lot to share. But so this little platform here, uh, it's very far from here, obviously. Um, but whenever you're doing your little timing thing, you're trying to get it so that the lava is going down and that you've got it on red. Um, it takes a minute, but you come down, you're doing your thing. And I will tell you that this part. So you saw there, I made it pretty handily and I didn't wall jump correctly, but you saw there, I made it pretty handily. The lava was pr probably about here. It took a lot of playing with this. I'm pretty sure that at one point I had these three way over here and way down here because I think you can make that jump. Um, but I just chose to move it because the percentage of times I was getting in here was much more fair for, for where it was in the level. Um, but also getting it so that it was timed that the lava would be right up on you. I mean, there are sometimes and maybe I can do it here. There are some times where that lava is like just coming up um, and it just sort of, you are it's like a, ugh, like a, I almost got got there um, for a second. And so you kind of have that holy crap moment. Uh, and uh, I, I do like that. That's, that's one of the things that happened a lot. Yeah, and it wasn't very good there. It wasn't as close as it could have been, but you get the idea. Um, and so that's a cool little part that I like. You have the, you have the block coming this way. Um, but overall, I just I really wanted this level to sort of feel like you were playing um, Core Seaside. Uh, here I had a, I had a thwomp here, but the problem was is if I uh, the momentum off this jump where my hand is, the momentum off this jump if I like took the momentum and then still landed, this thwomp would come down and it would it would kill these guys and you need them to move on. Um, so I had to remove that unfortunately, but it still works because you have the other guy. It still works because you have that guy coming through the other side and you have to hit it. Um, so you hit that when you come up to it. If I can do this part, maybe. Uh, luckily, I can fast forward because the magic of uh, color television and the magic of really just an editing software. Whew. No, everything's fine. 
good good and jump and jump and jump and then go and there we are and so um, when that happens of course you get the block you're, th so you're safe from the flops and this part and this is a little subtle detail I was just sort of going for um, some aesthetics here um, there is this, and I don't know if you can, yeah, you can't move the camera, but this is the, the little um, platform, and I did this, actually, this is very important. I did this because I ran out of room. There's only there's only so far you can make these levels, so I, I chunked the last little um, finale section in the sub area, and then, of course, it loops back to the front. So, um, but this is that little platform that you land on that has the spikes, and then you go, and you'll see. Um, but this is the bottom of it. So essentially, I just I shot you out here, and then boom, here's the other side. You have to hit that, and then you go boom, boom, jump. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't save my dash, because, you know, in Celeste, you have the dash, and that's the number one way I feel like people's dreams get crushed when they play core seaside is they get right next to the heart and then they didn't save their dash or their dash was just off so you have to use your little spin move um, to get the star and there is no heart obviously in Mario but I thought a star would be appropriate and I made it a clear condition so that you can't somehow magically and I don't think you can but I made it so that way so that you can't magically miss the heart or miss the star and still finish the level you know that's obviously in Celeste you have to have that to beat the level and there you have it. Um, that is my version of Core Seaside in Mario Maker. Uh, no ice ceilings, but we got thwomps. Uh, I don't know. I, I had a lot of time. Uh, I can't use my words correctly anymore, but I had a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of baby deers. I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, I, I truly enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy playing it. I'm gonna. I, it should be live if I can ever beat this damn thing. I think I beat it like twice. Um, so if I can beat it again and get it uploaded, uh, it will be there. Um, but hey, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, maybe more Mario Maker content to come, depending on how much you guys like this. So talk to you soon.